Okay, so uh, as part of our overview here, we're finally at the point uh, where the rubber meets the road, so to speak, of where all this is heading towards. And probably what most are interested in is how all this stuff going from uh, Data Studios to 3DS Max, forking off to Motion Builder, ultimately lands up into uh, being imported into uh, uh, Unreal 4. And then what can we do at this point once we have it in Unreal 4? Now, as mentioned in the 3ds max overview you could decide at that juncture which directions you want to fork it off of as, uh, based on uh, on uh, you know um, locking in and setting up your uh, uh, your basic uh, character rig so that all your animations is matched up and anything else that is added onto it can just be brought in as the uh, base model that is then bound to that that is bound to that uh, uh, rig so as mentioned that creates a, a single channel resource uh, direction as far as creating you know things like blend spaces uh, uh, aim offsets and uh, animation sets and physics and, and so forth can all be applied to that one single character model now this is uh, if we want to say unique characters and we want a little bit more control over over uh, over that actual design of that mesh then this would be an option and direction to go with as to so as to forking out the uh, the uh, the procedural character from uh, DS as a unique character that stands on its own because then you can you know it makes things a little bit easier to be able to manage it because it's more of a visual representation of that character but in this case what I've done is uh, for for the fun uh, and enjoyment is I've uh, taken those base sh shapes that I made for testing purposes only you know and, and they took all about maybe 20 minutes to make and maybe a half an hour to import in the, and uh, into into the uh, morpher modifier uh, but if we look at our, our character here you can see that when I imported it into uh, uh, Unreal 4 that it also brought in the uh, the morphing data that was applied to the morph modifier so this means that our character model within uh, UE4 now can take on various different shapes based on those body shapes. So if I decide, well, you know, I want to change the, this guy into into a zombie, I just change the uh, its uh, morph value from zero to one, and then he turns into a zombie. If I want to make our guy here a chick, <laughs> yeah, that was politically correct. Not. Um, I could just select the female base, hit one, and there goes a vehicle by, of course. And now we have a female off the male base model. Uh, the, uh, we'll zero that out, and then we can do, like, for example, if we want to make him heavy, notice I didn't say fat, which is politically incorrect, I just give him a value of one and, and uh, put on a few, uh, you know, a character puts on a few pounds. There's a bit of an issue here I'll kind of point out is that the, uh, the padding of the UV mapping is a bit stretched, so you, so now. This uh, texture was taken when harvested directly from DS onto the onto the player model. So, you know, the padding, the overlap of the texture on the mapping isn't far enough that uh, when it uh, when you apply a, a, a morpher to it, it kind of stretches it out a bit. So that's something to be aware of, which can be which can be fixed, or it could be just that I just don't have the texture set up properly. Who knows? Uh, but as you can see, this gives us access to any kind of offset that we have assigned to it, regardless of what size or shape and, and form that we have our character model. Now, to put things into a context, why would we want to go this route? Um, the uh, the ability to generate unique character models is there, so you know we can handle them like any other player model that we wish. So. Uh, and as well as the ideal is this if we have if we're making a game that is story driven you'd want your your characters to be definable which is can be achieved through uh, procedurals but uh, i don't know it always it always leaves you with the sense that it is a mathematical character it doesn't have any heart or soul and i think any artist would agree that uh, that's part of it you gotta have the hands-on kind of thing it's an ideology thing you know it's it, it looks the way it's supposed to but not really so anyways the uh the context in which you wouldn't want to use something like this is if where you needed a lot of different body shapes to be driven driven procedurally um as part of a say a horde or a mass of uh, different types of characters uh in a game for example as uh, assassin's creed where you're walking through a town and each and every character is unique by design now going this route here 
this direction, uh, we can create uh, a, a handful of body shapes as well as facial shapes and so forth, different variations, you know, wide, thin, narrow, uh, heavy uh, bodybuilder, like for example, here's a female bodybuilder. Okay, and then we can use uh, uh, use a, a CMS type data sheet to uh, introduce data driven uh, shapes and forms, uh, which is basically you know it's just a spreadsheet where you can punch in numbers to, to find the shape, what texture it uses, what clothing and that you want to assign to that character, and so forth, and plug that in, and then use uh, uh, use uh, procedurally driven variables to create unique characters off of that one set. Uh, you can even do things like randomize or what have you, because uh, at, since everything is based off a weighting system as part of a, a, an additive, what's called an additive morph, meaning that the data that you apply to it only adds to whatever value it is already there, then then whatever is the shape and form that you have can be made different based on another set of uh, morph targets. So. Um, I kind of semi-demonstrated that in 3ds Max, but in this case, like say for example, we want half and half. You know, we have. Uh, you, know, you can see that the the, the face is definitely different than than the base. It's, you know, it's getting zombie light, but not really a zombie. Um, I'll set that back to zero. Uh, I have a limited set here, so there's not much I can really demonstrate. You know, we want to put on some weight, but not too much. And we want to put that to a female. Uh, so, uh, so you can kind of see that you know we're getting some variations. We don't want the male body we, uh, zombie. We want the female as a 0.5. So you can see that all of a sudden we're getting some really weird and unusual shapes, just based on the handful. The what we got a half a dozen here. So if you if you start filling up with uh, with a lot of different uh, you know uh, uh, a couple of dozen different shapes you have a, a nice list to select from that you can create uh, you know so so many different variations that could be produced using a some kind of random generator you know it would take some fine tuning because you can get say extremes so say for example you go one 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 and uh, one and you can see we just to totally broke everything that was uh that you know that is uh plausible shall we say okay so let's reset everything back down to zero and see how we attach that to whatever rig that we want even if it's just for say the purpose of testing you know you want to change the shape you want to be able to introduce different shapes and test stuff out it's really a simple addition to your to your animation blueprint in that uh, we select our blueprint here and we go to um, go to our event graph you can see that I have what I, I just have a simple set more for function that uh, I come in to the event and go out of the event and based on this I can change that value so I can do say for example M H E A V Y and then compile that we should our character should gain some weight. So next time when I hit the play button, there's our character in uh, in the scene that we're running around with a gun and what have you. So I think that more or less covers everything as part of the uh, the overview process. I mean, if there's something that you're interested in seeing, particularly like for example, motion builder, we introduced uh, that as a uh, as part of the uh, source chain, you know, I can certainly demonstrate that, but that's uh, kind of a, as far as an overview goes, probably be just as long, uh, if not longer than what, uh, what I'm putting out right now. And I'm doing this stuff on the fly, but to kind of, you know, go back to what is important here, really, as to, uh, you know, if an application that you're adding to your, to your chain, to your source chain, forces you to think about what you're going to do with it once it exits out of that application, then that's the kind of application that you want. There's a lot of applications out there that will just spit out something and say, this is it, this is completed, now you're stuck with it, and you can't do anything more with it. So uh, and that's why I feel that uh, DS is probably rather underrated. It's because people don't really think of it as as to 
what it can do as a tool as to unique requirements uh, in establishing what should be uh, true with anything and you probably hear a lot more about is the the source the source where does this come from when it finally gets into say uh, an engine like unreal 4 which gives you the options of doing different things without necessarily committing to to a a given uh, uh, pathway as in this is how you have to do things you know options are good if it makes you think it's good what's even better is if we can take data that's in one application move it back to the application it came from or move it out into a different application altogether so as long as you can keep that, it, it, it's kind of like a blending of, um, of um, creativity rather than being, you know, formulated. So although we are, are procedurally driving our character models, there is still a lot you can do to make things that are unique and certainly unrecognizable in any game that you wish to use this technique. Okay, I guess that's, <laughs> that's it for now, you know. Uh, but, uh, although I rambled on a bit.